There we go. All right. Here we go. What up, though? Nathan Chase, Chase's Basement is up in the house. We got Josh Adams up in the house for the Chase's Basement podcast. What up, what up? We are definitely up in here. Let me uh turn this music down a little bit. Get into talking. Yeah, Josh up in here. Real nigga basement, too. You know what I'm saying? I asked for some water. I thought he going to bring me a bottle of water. This nigga brought me one of the cups. <laughs> I don't drink out of everybody's cups, but I fuck with Nate because I'm assuming he a, clean, he a clean nigga. Purple Kool-Aid cup. That's what this is. It's a Kool-Aid cup. For sure, for sure. So what's up, man? How's it been going? Man, it's been good, bro. I had a lot going on, but I wasn't going to miss this at all. I had to come down here and come kick it with you, bro. So for all the people that don't know, Josh Adams is a stand-up comedian. You've been uh, telling jokes how long? When when, how, when you started the game? Started in 2006 when I moved back. I started before that, but that shit don't count. That started like my official start was like uh, Labor Day. Well, I always get it confused. Labor Day. When is Labor Day? Okay, so when is July, when is Memorial like Day? That. When is Memorial Day? July, August. One of, them, one of them is in May. Nigga, which one is in May? Well, one of one of the holidays it was like May something. Yeah, I think uh, Memorial Day. Is Memorial in May. Day. Memorial Day in May. Memorial Day in May. I started 06 here when I had just moved back because Pittsburgh was playing the Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl, and I remember I just moved back from Mississippi. Oh, that's when the Super Bowl was downtown. Yes, Lord. Yeah, and Pittsburgh, okay. Pittsburgh, my team, and Jerome Bettis won, and all that shit. And I came back and I uh, I met Clayton Thomas. Dude, I went to high school with five thousand ones. Was his name? Yeah, Clayton yeah, 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 yeah. On a, on a, uh, on a Facebook, and uh, we went to high school together. This nigga started comedy while I was away. I didn't know that. Oh, for real? Yeah. And I was just up at Wayne State. Me and my nigga kicking it uh, with a friend of ours, just trying to holler at some hoes. We was of age at the time to be on college campus. We were not no grown niggas, <laughs> so we fucking around. And him, Mike, Larry, and a couple other niggas was promoting the show, but they was like, we performing in this talent show here too. I met up with them niggas, and long story short, I uh, was like, I was trying to get into comedy, and I didn't want to tell nobody, and Clayton was like, nigga, you was one of the funniest niggas in high school, and I want to help you start doing comedy, and it was just like a guy saying, so from that point on, I literally started comedy, probably like I said, I started comedy in May of whenever Memorial's Day is, I apologize, if that's a special day, I know for some people, but I just don't remember that day, holidays blow by my mind. Like so that, Clayton yeah. got you in, so you performed like at that talent show? No. That night, or just? No, I didn't perform that night, I kind of just went, and I watched them niggas. And I watched like uh, I wasn't even like laughing. I was more like kind of dissecting Studying, what niggas was doing. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, that was funny. All right, that was all right. That wasn't mm -hmm. shit. And um, from there, dog, like I just kind of started plotting my entry into comedy. I was gonna wait till the end of the year. Like, it was already because if you let a nigga, he gonna bullshit. I was like, bro, it's May. I'm gonna start at the beginning of 2007. And then nigga Clayton was like, start. If you don't start now, you never yeah. will. And I literally think I, like I said, I probably might have started two, three weeks later. I went to some shows after that and watched, but I literally started like on Memorial's Day. I remember that because a homeless nigga got into it with Blackberry and was like, I'm a, it's Memorial's Day. And then Blackberry's <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. And I never forget that. Like that was our first time doing comedy. A homeless veteran came in there and got into it with Blackberry. Where, where, where's the first place you performed at? On Grand River, it was called the Music Box. It was called, I think, no, it was called the Jazz Cafe when I started. But then, it, and then they changed it over to the Music Box. Mike Larry and Clayton was hosting it, and Claude was the promoter. Claude, uh, Jazz Claude Cafe. Williams. Yeah, it's right there on Grand River. Uh, I'm trying to think what's over there or not. It might be like Nefertiti's. Oh, well, Nefertiti across from the Coney Island. It's not a yeah, but it's up the street further. Oh, okay. I, God damn, I can't think, but it's okay. still over there. It's, it's it's called the Music Box, but I don't even think it's over there. Over there back off Greenfield. Off Greenfield. Yep, yep, yes, sir. 06, dog. So how did it go? Did it you bomb? You do good? How was it you nervous? Good. It went good the first time. It went real. It went good. Did all my time. I only had like to do like three. You know how it is in the beginning. Yeah. They like nigga do three to five, and I and I did good. And then the next time I really got the second time I went up is when I really got bit. When I went to uh the key club, and they did poetry in there, and it was on the second level, and nigga I just murdered. And I remember thinking like, ah, oh, bro, I can do this for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. dog. Like. And I and I wasn't even tripping about no money. It was just like nigga, that was just the greatest feeling. And I was I, that second time really had me. The first time I was like, all right, that shit was kind of cool. I did good, but yeah. let's see if it's something I really want to keep doing. But yeah, the second time was uh, I don't like telling niggas I did good the first time because you don't normally do good the first you're time. Not, you're not supposed to. You not like and I and when I talk to new comedians, I'm like, bro, you're not expected to be good when you first start. So don't trip if you're not like. It, honestly, if you doing good the first time, you probably doing something wrong. You either stole that material or <laughs> niggas don't get that. But I just happen to be, and I'll be wanting to brag, and I also don't want to give niggas a false sense of what it's gonna be. I'm like, I just happen to be good at this shit in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I was just blessed with the gift to be able to go do that. I always naturally been funny, and um, 
niggas be coming in and thinking they supposed to be like, nigga, I, nigga, I, ain't, I grabbed my like four times, I ain't bombed yet. I'm like, nigga, stop counting. You gonna bomb? Like, nigga, I had bad shows. Mm-hmm. I bombed before. Like that happens. Yeah, I, the first time I, I, I could have swore I was. I was I was sitting up there just just reading everybody in the room. Look at the, mm-hmm. look at the white boys. They think they Jerry Seinfeld. That motherfucker over there think he Chris Rock. Yeah. He thinking that you know what? I'm everybody. I'm I'm a mix of everybody. <laughs> I read my first joke, and it's like this bright light. That bright light was shining in my eye. I read my first joke, and the audience gave a little chuckle. And for some reason, after that, I lost my mind. I was like, yeah, yeah, this motherfucking comedy shit is for me. Yeah. And then I did my next five minutes, about a minute. I, did, I crushed five minutes worth of jokes into a minute, and I hear nothing but crickets. And I started sweating, and I seen that light, and I walked off, and I ran out the building, and I cried, driving all the way down the freeway. <laughs> and niggas don't get that. I've seen nigga, grown men cry, man. Comedy is a real game. Like, you started when? Uh, about 07, 08. Oh, okay, yeah. So, a couple mm-hmm. of times to me. So, what made you be like, all right, this is something I want to do? I so, saw um, Jamie Foxx special. I think I might need security. That was a good And I special. was like, okay, now. I'm Because you get sick of people. You grow, you grow up and girls always say, you retarded. You stupid. You retarded. You stupid. And I was like, hold on. Don't y'all mean funny? Yeah. Don't you mean funny? I'm funny, right? Yeah. So say I'm funny. Then you'd be like, no, retarded and stupid is not. Retarded and stupid is funny. And I was like... Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's one of those things where you be like, I got to give it a shot. That's what's, what it was. What's the worst can happen? I always had it in me, bro. Like, after I realized I wasn't going pro in high school, I was like, nigga, what do I love to do? And what, I, you, what sports you was trying to play? I was playing football. Football? Yeah, yeah. What was you, wide receiver? Quarterback. Or? Quarterback? No yeah, shit? yeah, I was quarterback. Shit, you was, a Michael Vick motherfucker. Yeah, I was left, I'm left handed too. You know, I wasn't as no fast shit. as that nigga. But, and the funny part is, my once I started playing quarterback, like, Mike Vick was the we only, only left hand quarterback we had was Steve Young. Wasn't no black nigga. Mm-hmm. Then Mike Vick came literally like, my 11th grade senior year, he was taking off, and I was like, "Oh, I got a nigga to kind of look at that." Mm-hmm. But shit, I wasn't nothing like the Vic. But um, yeah, bro. And I remember a teacher had pulled me to the side and was like, "Josh, have you ever considered doing stand up comedy?" And you know, to a kid, comedy down the lane, like, and layman's like, when you break comedy down, it's kind of corny to go up there and tell jokes. Yeah. But I really did want to do it, so I kind of asked my girlfriend at the time. I was like, the teacher just asked me if I want to do stand up, and she was gonna set some shit up. I, took, oh, I went damn. to my girl. I went to my girl. That's like, like, even the way you go Oak Park. Oak Park. Yeah, see, that's where they encourage you and shit. They, don't, they encourage you in DPS. Yeah. Like, come get your dumb ass son with his jokes and shit. My nigga, they, she was like trying to set something up, and I went. I remember going to uh, my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, uh, "Hey, why Miss Simeon say she can get me on Comic View? I put some extra shit on it." Just to see what my girl was going to say. And she, she was like, nigga, you funny, but you ain't that funny. I was like, yeah, you know, just like a bitch to crush your dreams. Like, yeah. who knows where I would have been had I started at 17. Like, nigga, I could have been fell off by now. Yeah, you that's know what, what Eddie Murphy started. Exactly. So it was just funny that uh, people saw it in me before I saw it in myself. And, I, you know, no matter what it is, if it's for you, it's going to get to you. And I, mm-hmm. I, I ended up doing it. I, I was like 21 when I started. So so what happened with the, uh, the football thing? Uh, Long story short, bro, I mean... I could have possibly went to college and played ball. I was good enough, you know what I'm saying, to get a, get a scholarship. I was I got some letters from like some D2 schools, but I just didn't have it. Like my coach, rest in peace, he no longer here. Like he was an asshole, and he uh he made it. He I didn't love the game no more. Like oh, it wasn't fun. He took it, damn. Yeah, he took, took the love out the game. But I had something else I was in love with. Like I probably could have still went to school for fo- play football, but comedy was gonna creep back into my life. Like mm-hmm. this was something, dog, that was just always like right there, nigga. Like. I was everywhere I go. I was the funniest nigga, no matter what, um, no matter what school, no matter what state I was in, no matter what city, no matter who I was hanging with. I was one of the funniest niggas in the bunch, if not the funny. You just so it was, talk, it was gonna happen. Talk and act funny. Yeah, and it can't. wasn't like I was trying. It was yeah, just like don't. I think in life you have a role. Like you just gonna play the role in life. I, I could have been raised anywhere, Detroit, Arkansas, nigga, Yugoslavia. I was gonna be the funniest nigga, no matter where I was at, dog. Yeah, That's what yeah. I think. You know what I'm saying? You'll still Sweden, be funny. Sweden, look at your <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Josh is funny, yas. Yeah. I'd have just been that nigga, though. <laughs> so, so you got in the game. So now you uh doing shows. So everybody, everybody down. Everybody fucking with you. Nobody ain't like show you no hate. Like new nigga in the game. Yeah, comedy game. Yeah, like, but I think it's the normal kind of hate that I understand now. It's like it ain't even hate. It's just like you know how I many niggas come into comedy and go. Yeah, niggas come all the time. Like, and I came into comedy when it wasn't no. It wasn't no Kevin Hart boom. 
Like we saw something different when Kevin Hart started doing comedy. Comedy became cool again. Like oh, mm-hmm. everybody wanted to be a stand-up comedian because the biggest com- um, comedian in the world and the biggest star in the world was a black guy, a little small black guy out of Philadelphia. Yeah. So once uh you know once that happened, everybody wanted to come do comedy. But when I started, nigga, Comic View was dead. Everything Wasn't was no, dipping. Yeah. Old so nigga, we didn't have no yeah. places to do comedy at. So when nigga saw us come out, like niggas would give you that tough. Like I played football, they would give you that tough ass. Hayes and treatment like, eh, you know, but I really wasn't a nigga trying to get to like, I was like, I don't need y'all to like me. I'm just here to do comedy because I think this is what my calling is or whatever. And, um, I started doing comedy and them niggas just started to fuck with me based upon the fact that I wasn't always trying to, I wasn't trying to be up under them older niggas. No disrespect, but it's like, I don't know y'all niggas. I'm a grown man yeah. getting into comedy. I'm a, well, you know, I was 21, I'm, but I'm an adult for real. I'm grown. Mm-hmm. So it's like, nigga, I'm driving fucking bitches. You know what I'm saying? Like no condom. It's like, I don't <laughs> yeah. really need you niggas to, to like me. Like <laughs> I, if, if it's your show, Nate, I'm a give you the respect. Can I go up? I'm going to do my time. I'm going to be as funny as I can to get the fuck out the way. And niggas was like, Fucking with me, and then I like nigga. I, I like I said, I, I came on fast, and niggas was like, "All right, bro, I will take you on the road. I give you five on my show." And after uh, just to not to speed up the process, I'm gonna let you do the interview as far as like asking me the questions. But like, I didn't get none of. I got no hate different than what you would get from the niggas who looking like, bro. We see niggas come and go all the time. So outside of that, I got the normal. So love. so you didn't have to. You didn't have to. Uh, approach people like, hey, put me on, put me on. People came to you. Well, because, like you funny because, uh, yeah, because I was funny all the, off off the rip. And then Clayton was a nigga who, at this time, was doing his due diligence. So he was doing the work, and then he was telling niggas like, this is my man from high school. He cool. He funny. Y'all okay. should put him up for me. And plus, I was driving niggas everywhere. So that was the best part is that I had a car, and a lot of the comedians <laughs> I started with didn't. I had a '97 Jeep Wrangler, and. I could fit at least four niggas in there, three if it was a big nigga in the back or something like that. So I could fit that many niggas. So niggas, I was always around, and they'd be like, all right. And Josh, I was going to get up because they'd be like, please put him up. He brought me. But it was a, it was also an extra benefit. They was like, oh, the nigga funny. Go ahead. You can go up. Yeah. And niggas, niggas appreciated the growth. They was like, oh, we, we like this nigga. So you gave Gemini a ride before? Everybody gave Gemini a ride before. Everybody but Gemini gave him a ride. <laughs> Everybody but Gemini gave Gemini a ride. Gemini gave himself Yeah, a ride. he's never taking himself nowhere, nigga. And, 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 and this is the funny part about it. Like, because, you know, I got the hoodies and shit to say so slept on. And niggas love to tell you, like, nigga, you ain't slept on. Everybody fuck with you. He like, I'm like, he like, nigga, I'm slept on. I'm like, Gemini, you've been, you performed everywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. And nigga, somehow you've gotten everywhere in the world. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. you far from slept on. And Fago got a fucking billboard. Shout out to Fago on the side of the freeway on Greenfield. Nigga, hey. Slept on is, uh, I think, a thing about you feel about yourself. Like, nigga, you, it's more that you got to do. Like, you know, it's still people that ain't up oh, on what you do. Okay, because that, that, I was about to say, like, where where did you get that from? Because you you in the Motown Laugh Kings. Yeah, yeah. Alicia. Alicia, uh, I don't know if you remember Bad Man with Gemma. She a lawyer. Um, she used to be with Tony Roney all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, she just always, when Tony Roney had Hoop City Grill, but it was called uh, JD's House of Comedy inside of there. Okay. Inside of Star Theater, he would put me up. He would, you know, he would treat me like a new nigga. Like, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna put this nigga up, but he would make niggas sell tickets to, to kind of perform. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. So tickets, you know, yeah. I was like, all right, cool to get some stage time in this big ass club inside of the Star Theater with yeah. nigga. When the star got put, when they put the star down there, nigga, that was like nigga, that was downtown Southfield, nigga. Everybody was like, nigga, it's glitter on the ground. Like we walking mm-hmm. around hollering at hoes at the movie theater. And um, then on the ground, yeah, nigga. And she was like, she was just, she really fucked with me. Like, Josh is funny. You should put him up more. And then as my career started to progress later on, I, when I was like certified, she was like, you just, you know, you, she like, you one of the most slept on comedians around here. And I just that always stood, that always stuck with me. And I was like, all right, yeah. And I don't know, like, niggas ain't fucking with me. It's just like niggas just ain't up on what I'm on yet. Like niggas ain't caught up to my frequency yet, and they will though. So that's kind of just like what keep me going, like. In this shit, cause you know this shit hard. Mm-hmm. You know, like nigga, I'm and I've literally not had the break yet that I think that you know niggas. You get that break, like it's no more TV shows. It's all internet. And honestly, when you think about comedy in the Midwest and or comedy just in the state of Michigan, if you name if you if you go to any nigga, white, black, gay, church, whatever they do, and you ask them to name the five funniest people in the city, including the internet niggas, they gonna name me. And I haven't had a big viral hit. I, I did TV. For like a minute, um, you had a couple. You had a couple appearances. BT on TV. Apollo. I did BT Apollo, and then laughs was on YouTube. Nobody saw that for real. So in reality, I've been. I'm one of the niggas that people know that didn't get that whole big like 
been on BET Apollo, uh, been on BET's Comic View, or been on Def Jam, and then the other niggas who internet sensation. So yeah. I fall in this weird space in the middle okay. where it's like brick by brick. I've just been doing shows and word of mouth has been like, oh, that tall nigga funny as hell. That nigga Josh is this, da 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 Young, old, college, whatever. And I'm right there. So it's like, nigga, I'm right at the precipice of where the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's about to all go down. You feel me? So what do what, what you think is going to set you over the top? What'd you Content. i just been bullshitting. Like, I've been sitting around like I told you, I was in that middle ground of like, all right, I got to get on TV or move here and move there. It's like, no, nigga, like right now we on the internet. It could be no niggas watching and it could be motherfucking 1500 and they ain't all got to watch right now. Yeah. They can watch this shit a year from now and yeah. fuck with what I'm on and be like, all right, bet it's conquering this shit and putting out content. Cause nigga, I'll be holding jokes. Like for what? Like I got jokes that I'm like, I don't want to record and put out there yet. Like nigga, if I yeah, put it out there. You, you can't, comics can't put jokes on the internet cause then Somebody steal your jokes and then they're not your jokes and then but 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 but, but Nate, that, that's 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 that, that's the rule. But that's Chris Rock process. and everybody else put their jokes on the internet. But, but it's like the thought process. If I got the funniest shit now, why not say it, put it on the internet, and let it do what the fuck it do? It's yours, nigga. If, three if somebody, minutes. If somebody steal it, then you still got a date on when you kind of sort of put it out there, like you know. I'm not even thinking about stealing no more because niggas here stole from me. Yeah. Niggas, you know, niggas have taken, and I'm cool. I'm gonna write more. Niggas from out of town took jokes. Like niggas come around, like that's gonna happen. That don't bother me. So it's like, why would I hold back some jokes to be like, oh, when I get this opportunity to be on TV, it's like, nigga, I gotta put it out there now because that might be what put me on TV. Oh, put you, so what am I sitting on scripts for? What am I sitting on jokes and skits and ideas? Like when my show come out, bitch, you ain't got shit now. Put it out now. So so put your body at work to get it. You gotta get people something to fuck with. I ain't gonna say who stole your joke, but uh. What happened? I mean, I've heard niggas. Somebody told you they did it, or you actually put it like this, Nate. Seen it. Put it like this. I've seen niggas do shit because you know, if you sit around a nigga long enough and watch people long enough, you will you you that'll inspire something. And yeah. so I look at it like that. I, but it, it be jokes that like I be like, mm, I don't even really do that no more. And it was so old that it's it's jokes I don't even use because it's like I'm such a snob with comedy that it's like. Ugh, I don't even want to say that no more, but it's cool. They took it, so I can really leave it the fuck alone. So it's just, it be topics that we all kind of come across, and it's like, man, I'm just trying to dig deeper with this comedy shit. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, the whole, the shit niggas be, that's why I really think I'm kind of like, my road a little longer, because I just don't really like the low-hanging fruit of comedy. Like, it's shit I could talk about just as good or even better than niggas because of the way my mind works and the way I write. But it's just like, nigga, I kind of make it. Simple. Yeah, it's just like, you know, niggas, you know, like, not to say simple ain't funny, but it's just certain shit that it's like, come on, dog, we all doing that? That's what we talking about? <laughs> we still doing the baby mama shit? Like, even though it might be a better way to tell a baby mama joke or tell a story about it, but it's like, all right, your baby it's mama don't old like it. Old genre, it's old yeah, genre. Yeah, it's like, nigga, it's we done beat that horse, nigga, to the point where, nigga, we're Peter the fuck the, at. Y'all uh, niggas fucking this horse up at this point in time. The, uh... Roaches. The smell like hot dog water. The like. light skinned niggas do this shit. It's like, yeah. come yeah. on, nigga. It's some light skinned niggas will fuck niggas up out here. Like, mm -hmm. nigga, it's some dark skinned niggas more since nigga Tyrese. Come on now. Don't put no light skin uh qualities on that nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's a dark skinned nigga. Nigga, sensitive is what sensitive is. But that's just what I'm saying. Niggas take jokes and we all live in the same. We live in the same space, so we might come across the same material. So I don't take it personal. Like I look at inspiration, like nigga. But you know if it's you know if it's verbatim, like come on, bro, you ain't even try to switch it a little. You know? Oh yeah, well them niggas is just like whatever. But some niggas need them bitches. Like, hey, here, nigga, go ahead. I don't care. Like I'll, I'll make me. more. I like nigga. Yeah, I literally start to hate my jokes after. I hate them, but I just get tired of them. Like it's like all right, I gotta come up with something else. See, I did that, but I figured out I ain't told my jokes to nobody. But they got tired in my mind. Yeah. But you can't do that. Yeah, you're right. You can't, see, I was, I was, I was. What I was trying to do was uh, do what the professionals do. Chris Rock and all them. Keep your jokes until you do a special. Then when you do a special, then you can't use them no more. That's true. But until then, they all, they all still there for you to dig into. Yeah, I still got them. But then a lot of that stuff, nigga, I've been doing this what 15 years now. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff, I've outgrown. You okay? You so done, for me, to you done told it enough so in the city. In the city or just, nigga, it don't even apply to me no more. Like, I, whatever I come across in, like, comedy, it's something I've dealt with in life. Or I know that somebody dealt with. And I was in that place and I felt that way at the time. Like So now you know I've grown it. Yeah, like, nigga, I had a joke about not liking iPhones 
because niggas was bragging about them. And then once I got iPhone, I kind of had to chill. It's like, nigga, I can't even put the same energy behind it, even though it's clever. Yeah. But it's like, nigga, I literally got an iPhone in my motherfucking pocket that's going off right now, nigga. So it's like, I yeah, I can't really do that no more. It's almost like a rapper, nigga. You got to be authentic to about uh, to to what you're talking about. That's what I feel like. I'm not gonna tell no joke about shit that I don't truly feel like. That way, I ain't gotta apologize. I ain't gotta apologize to Apple. I didn't have one at the time, but now mm-hmm. I gotta be cool. So all your jokes are kind of. Like based in reality Like it kinda Sorta coulda Maybe happened It's steeped Either either it's first person Or it's uh You know what I'm saying Or it's third person I believe that's what it is First or third person It's like yeah Either it either was me Or I know somebody That it happened to And it's like alright And I can always play Devil's advocate And put my myself in that place Like alright How do I feel it, it never comes from a place Like oh Nate think That uh Pickles is disgusting So I'm gonna write a joke Based upon what the fuck you feel Nigga I love pickles I couldn't do that you feel me? I fuck yeah. with pickles hard, nigga. Fuck the cucumber. I like so, 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 how do you, uh, how do y'all, how, you got the Motown Laugh Kings as, as you, Darius Bennett, yep. Jeff Horse, yep. and Ron Taylor. Yes, yes. So, how did, how did y'all get together? I know everybody knew each other. How did y'all just say, you know, we're going to make a group in this All right. us? So, how, how, you know, why well, was it right. two members? So, the was, Motown five Laugh Kings. Members. It's four of us. So, the Motown Laugh Kings was, uh, Started on some more like okay I'd already been doing comedy, Darius had already been doing comedy so I would see Darius, Darius was the only other nigga that I would see at the white rooms because most comedians in the urban circuit don't they scared to do the white rooms for some reason now you would come over there shots yeah yeah so they would be scared to come over there but me and Darius would be the only niggas over there and we would we didn't want like we was the best of friends but I would see that nigga and he would you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. they two niggas there and we would get on like that and then Jeff and Ron met each other. Cause Jeff is the white guy. He would do all the black rooms, and Ron Jeff the white guy, and Jeff Ron Charlie. would do all the black rooms. I mean, no, no, I take it back. All right, Jeff would do all the black rooms, and Ron black, would do the yeah. white ones. Yeah. So they swapped out, which was the fucking craziest shit. Jeff was like, "Nigga, come over here." He's like, "Nigga, but dude, come over here to Blackberries," and then Ron would be like, "Come over here to fucking Shots or mm-hmm. Bart's," and that's how they got cool. So those two got cool, and then they were the, they, from. This is where they tell me the story. They admired me and CP. Cause they was like, they just, they, their ability to be able to improvise and freestyle. They was like, we need to get cool with these niggas on some old, we get cool with them. We can learn to do what they do and make these niggas our friends. And then they was like, we should all be in a group. CP really wasn't like trying to fuck around in no group from what I heard. And he had his own ideas that he wanted to do. Shout out to CP. And then we all got cool. It was me, like us three got cool, me, Jeff and Ron. And we would go to Nikki D's Coney Island. Mm-hmm. And somehow I introduced Ron to Doughboy's Cash Out. We in Chase's basement, so hip hop comes into it. So yeah, I introduced him. To Doughboy's Cash Out was seventy percent uh, uh, Oak Park and seventy percent of Doughboy's Cash Out for niggas that don't know. Um, so basically, Ron was like, "Damn, I think that's dope that it's a group of motherfuckers that came together at mm-hmm. rap. That would be nice." He like, "That'd be cool if we could do that with comedy." So that was Ron's idea. So Ron basically presented that idea to everybody. I thought it was corny. I was like, I don't want to be in a motherfucking group with no niggas. And <laughs> the damn temptation. And the, temptation and the shit. name is the Motown Lacking. It just sounded corny to me. But at the time, this is how God worked. It will always, out of all three of us, two of our cars will be down. So we always rode together. So I'm like, fuck it. Free t-shirts and a, and a rag. So it's like, all right, bet. So my car good. Bonding time. Nigga. You're so bonding. It, it was like, fuck it. I can play the role. And then we ended up doing the Motown Laugh Kings, getting the shirts. Niggas, now niggas was hating this because they was like, oh, Motown Laugh Kings? Maybe I should call yourselves princes. Because at this time, you still, yeah, who, who are you to come and take over the who, game? Who do you think you're a king? You got Bill Hill, uh, Kool Aid, Rest in Peace. You got Bell Man. You got uh, yeah. Mike Bonner, all these niggas. So then what connected Darius to us was that Ron, um, De- uh, no, J- uh, Jeff got uh, DUI. And Darius was drinking real bad. And they was bonding on some old nigga. Let's leave this drinking shit alone together. Oh, yeah. I remember and years. then they came together. And then I remember they called me drunk at my ex-girl, my, my girl house at the time. And was like, Darius want to be in the Motown Lab Kings. And it was like, us voting on it. And I was like, I like the nigga. He young. He a funny nigga. He run our age. He he fuck with the hoes. He cool guy. And that's how that nigga got in the group. You know what I'm saying? And he was in the group. Motown Lab Kings. <laughs> <laughs> So How old are you? Huh? How old are you? I'm 36. Still at that age where mm-hmm. a lot of things is related to the women. Yeah, it's getting it, it, it's, it's, it's it's damn near getting away. It's damn near getting away from me. I'm damn near like fuck them. Yeah, you, you said we was in college. You're like, yeah, we was up there. We fuck with the hoes. Like, yeah, that was on the door. Uh, we fuck with the hoes. I love making women laugh, bro. 
Oh man, I so, love making women laugh. That's I think that's the whole reason I like this shit for real. Niggas, I I don't give a fuck if no not a nigga laugh. Everybody gonna laugh, but nigga, it's like if the women laughing, like most of my audience, like my core audience, dog. In reality, women is like you come to my shows, like that I put together, I book, or if I'm somewhere, it's a lot of women there, a lot of women, and I love that shit. The easy groupies. I ain't gonna call them queens groupies. You know what I'm saying? They just got good taste in comedy, and I appreciate y'all, nigga. They love me to death, and I love them back, nigga. How, how's, the, how's the love life working with comedy? Ooh, it's weird. I put it like this: comedy. <laughs> let me tell you why, nigga. It's a uh, comedy is good because if it wasn't for comedy, I wouldn't have both of my daughters. I met both of my daughter moms because of comedy. One at Blackberry, shout out to uh, Johanna Mama, and then I met uh, Kennedy's mama, my youngest. At MLK Ski Weekend That's my niece game Kennedy Oh yeah 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 That's uh, the MLK Ski Weekend Yeah I met her mom At MLK Ski Weekend And we hooked up After and I We ain't do nothing there She kept it cool And then we met up We hooked up Back home And then that's what Percolated a year or two later So But no it's hard Because You gotta so you have you single now Yeah I'm single now But it's funny because Women have to adjust to that whole thing. Like, I'm not just a nigga who say I do comedy. Like, motherfuckers know me. Like, if you, mm -hmm. like, you name, you ask about comedy, about like, oh, yeah, Josh, that tall nigga. Like, I'm known. And then it's like, I have, it's weird to say I got fans or support. I, more if I come support, but I got people who really like, nigga, you one of the funniest niggas and it's women. That, and I think it's weird for a woman to be like, okay. You so know. you, did you ever have any issues going out? People All was the like, time. there go Josh. And she like, excuse me? I mean, yeah. Like, like people sorry, do that. baby girl, that's Josh. Yeah, people to do that. People to do and that. She, like, she, she wasn't feeling it? They wasn't feeling it, but it's just an adjustment period. It's like, all right, you do realize it gonna, it's going to get to the point where, nigga, we might not be able to go nowhere Yeah. And some, without somebody stopping us behind that. Or just understanding that with comedy, nigga, this isn't like, I stay out late. I stay out late. I got a lot of shows, like, especially now where a nigga might call me right now. And I'm like, all right, nigga, I'm going to go. I got a show now. But at this level of my career, nigga, it's almost like, nigga, I'm on some uh, on-call shit. A nigga might be like, hey, Josh, I got a few dollars for you. Woo, 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 woo. All right, bet. I've done that. We was at the movies, finna go somewhere else. All right, let me go get this bag, and then we gonna go do this after that. And it, it, it's literally like a woman has to be able to understand, like, this was here before you, and low-key, it's come with you here. So that kind of, that's what led to some of the issues. No, whatnot. nigga, I just was cheating. I ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said I said because I want to be better. Like, you know, it's just, like... Women like niggas that are funny. You know what I'm saying? And I'm tall, and that's like being a woman with a fat ass. So it's like a tall nigga, you ain't even gotta be cute. You tall? Okay. So was so was it so was it like just your hormones or the comedy and the hormones? Like I, I can't beat them off with a stick. I started fucking at 17 and then once I became an adult, I it's almost like being a mutant. Like I discovered my powers at my at the peak of me getting pussy, and it was like, oh. That whole parents missing thing. Yigga. So now I'm out here 21, I'm grown, and I have a gift that nigga makes you 20 times more attractive to somebody. And it's like, and I'm getting to do it every night, and now nigga, and I wasn't even drinking in, and it was just like, women was just attracted to it. So it was like, nigga, I would be fucking, and nigga, I went 17 years without fucking, and now nigga, it's pussy everywhere, and these hoes is drunk, and they fucking with me. Up. Bro, I was just like going crazy. <laughs> so it was like, you know. I, I I I didn't know nothing else to do but take that pussy at the time. Like nigga, that that was the only vice I had back then. You know what I'm saying? Like nigga, niggas was smoking weed, niggas was drinking, niggas was snorting coke, popping pills. I was like, I take some of that pussy. Y'all can have all that other <laughs> shit. Over there. I take that pussy that she brought with her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I was on, my guy. It takes it takes it takes a while for the feeling to wear off. It takes Man. that 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 hormone feeling when you thinking. I gotta get pretty much everyone I see, cause if I don't, then I'm be like, you could have did it and you didn't do it. And you don't want to go through life and miss no pussy. Yeah, you see some beautiful, yeah, women, uh, some beautiful women in Detroit and just all over. Like where we get to travel. Like, like I said, when I first started comedy, I didn't even think about getting paid. I literally just start about really getting paid in comedy, nigga, like two, three years ago. Back then, I used to be like, bro, I get to travel. Like, nigga, I used to look up like, damn, nigga, comedy got me in Indianapolis. Like, I couldn't have jumped on a Greyhound and came myself. But I'm here because I do comedy. Somebody pay for me to be here. Somebody pay for me to be in Chicago, Florida, New York, Atlanta, wherever the fuck I might have been. Comedy brought me there. So, nigga, I always appreciated that. And it was just like, nigga, it blew my mind. So, it's like, dog, you kind of just get caught up in that life. Like, nigga, I'm a real comedian. Like, nigga, I may not be Eddie Murphy yet, but, nigga, this is what Eddie Murphy experienced. I'm so Eddie Murphy you, to these motherfuckers. Did you, did you have to, like, ask people to start paying you? Or they just said, here you go, you good. You, you, getting, you getting paid now. 
you know, did you have to like where my money at? Y'all? I got booked early. So it, I got booked early, like Joey's Comedy Club. That was that's no longer open. That was like the first club. I got booked three months into that, and then people would put me like put like this. People would book me to do stuff, but then once I realized that I could put my own shows on, I started booking myself. Yeah. And I don't know if that just happened to coincide with people who decided to start booking me, but at first I wasn't getting paid and I wasn't tripping about it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, all right, I want more time on stage than they're giving me. So I ain't even trip out the money So I put on my own shows With my niggas Once they found out I did comedy So I was putting on my own shows And selling them bitches out And doing as much time as I want And booking niggas Booking niggas that was new like me And booking some of the OGs To do my shit mm-hmm. Being there to put money in their pocket And then like I said With that I guess it coincided with me I think because I Maybe niggas was like Alright he making money now So you know Let's give him money But I felt because Maybe I was getting funnier Because I was getting more time Now I was like Oh you You're bookable now you have okay. you, you had okay. ten, but now you got twenty minutes. Yeah. So now I'm gonna pay you because twenty dollars, twenty dollars, twenty minutes is a bookable amount of time. So I think it was just the fact that I started doing my own shows and got funnier because of all the stage time that I was getting. That nigga money started coming from outside, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying sources. So how you end up? Uh, what made you think about doing the album? Uh, uh, well, I did one before because I went and did this competition out in. Uh, so, you, so this so that. The you miss education is not the first one. No, nah, that, that was the second one. The first one was uh Josh Adams live from the drop that I did with uh Uproar Entertainment, Uproar Records or some shit like that. And um I went out to do the World Series of Comedy in Las Vegas. It's, okay. It was this big comedy festival they did, and I yeah. I was I think I took like third or fourth place. No shit. And um and everybody else was from West Coast and shit like that, and I took like fourth or I want to say it's probably fourth. And then basically the dude was like, I want to give you a record deal. They gave me like a little thousand dollar advance. I still owe them for that. And then um, I didn't like it because they took like, I did like multiple shows or whatever. And that, that was the weekend that Kevin Hart did Saturday Night Live and he wore the dress. I remember that. Yeah. Watching that. <clears throat> and um, I did multiple shows and I, and the shows that they picked, I didn't like, I was like, yeah, I so they was booking you at different spots. No, no, we, I, I booked a spot. That was like, all right, bro, I want to record my album here. So just make me the headliner this weekend. Okay. And I told him like this, you can take the money and just let people in for free just because I'm being paid to do this. So they was like, all right, it worked out for us. We keep the money. Uh, we let people in for free. They get to see a funny ass mm-hmm. comedian and shit. It's a win win. And down. um, like I said, I was at uh, the uh, Indiana. The drop is in uh, damn, where the drop at? It's in Notre Dame. Where Notre Dame plays in um Indiana. Indiana, but it's yeah. no, 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 no. What's the city though? Oh, I can't think of what the city is right now. But wherever yeah. the city is in uh, where Notre Dame play at, I say Lafayette, but no, I'm thinking about Purdue. But whatever, I did it there, and um, I just didn't like how it turned out. What they picked, they picked the artwork that was some ass. So the next time I was able to do it myself, I realized that nigga, we can do this shit ourselves. We, we, I, 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 I don't remember you promoting it. Or... I didn't give a fuck about it. It's cool. Put like this, I ain't gonna. It, it ain't trash It's just I don't like it So you may get it And enjoy it But in reality I just created some shit To get get that thousand dollar advance So that way I could pay For some Pay for my daughter's Daycare and shit like that like, So it was like All new stand up You wrote or something like I mean it was stuff That I was developing mm-hmm. And that was cool And it was like Alright bet I'm gonna do this I was on some hustle shit At the time Alright It's funnier than a lot of shit I just don't think It's my best And I'm hard on myself you But know it was the first one though the First joint though. Yeah it was the first one So it's kind of like all right, this you know how niggas be like this was the one he was his he waited his whole life to make like nigga reasonable doubt was Jay Z shit like yeah this, but it but wasn't that, that. that yeah that would usually happen in comedy though it not the like first that. one it yeah, wasn't like that yeah, yeah. so it was like whatever so then once I started talking to people about it they was like bro you only really paying them to do some shit that you could do yourself they 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 if your shit and you promote it the way you're supposed to they gonna get the bulk of it and in reality you can do it yourself so that's the approach I took with the miseducation which it was like all right I'm gonna take the miseducation I'm gonna sell out a couple venues uh. Keep the money, like I said, get paid for the show that I'm actually doing. I sold out three shows that weekend at the uh, at Trixie's and Hamtramck. They didn't even charge me for the venue, nigga. They had so many niggas in there. They never seen that many niggas come through there. They they or Hennessy and all types of shit. <laughs> Hennessy rim. They like, what is all this liquor that we made? They had to order liquor. They don't use to keep on stock. But nigga was selling it. They was like, I don't even think they knew they was selling for the right price. That shit was so cheap. They didn't even know. Like niggas was like, these niggas selling Hennessy for fucking seven dollars. Like nigga. <laughs> Niggas Tell was, my mama to come down here. Niggas was taking shots and pouring it and taking it home. Like, these <laughs> niggas is wasting liquor. But they pack, loving your yeah, show, bro. Packing that bitch out. I'm coming back for tomorrow, taping. And nigga, they was telling me like, after that show, they was like, 
anytime you want to come back, you can have this bitch. But then they ended up shutting down for whatever reason. No COVID, but they just couldn't do it no more. And um, like I said, I had mad control over the material, the the audience that came through there, and I I, I appreciate it. And that was my like, all right, working on how to do a a special. Because a lot of comedians can't do a special. They just good live. I'm great live. But I also want to be good when somebody go back to watch it later. Because a lot of my shows, mm-hmm. I always say, a lot of the audiences feel like, nigga, this show was for us. Like, it's so much imp- improvisation that they like. That's that's what I wanted to ask you. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. So on <clears throat> on this album, I listened to it. And it, so that was all written? Because it Some seemed, it. when you, when you. You one of those people when you tell a joke, I don't know if it's a joke or improv. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you just looked in the audience and just made it's a blurred line. I can't. That's that's what makes it so good. You don't know when he made something up or when he just bullshitting. It's like, well, where's the actual joke at? Yeah, so what is. what was that out? Because it, it sound it sound I've watched you for. It sound like you just good at just like I'm about to bullshit it's like like you did a good ass fucking bullshit album and I can't tell if it, nothing seems like Chris Rock a Seinfeld yeah. star punchline yeah. it don't seem like that my so comedy is, is like, it or my comedy like I mean a lot of that was written I mean like I said uh, 40 35 40% of that was probably written then a lot of it was like cause my comedy it involves improv like if I don't have fun up there I'm not gonna give my best so it's like a a lot of it is all comedy weaved into all of it. Like, if you watch Patrice O'Neal, Elephant in the Room, mm-hmm. it's kind of like you can tell he improv. He brought the crowd in there and he had jokes and it felt like y'all was kicking it, but it was like, it was it was stand-up. So that's just my comedy is where it's like, people tell me like, nigga, you, I get so many niggas walking up to me like, hey bro, I make comedy look easy. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But nigga, I'm naturally was good at this and I've been doing it for so long, nigga, this hard work. Like, and niggas will say that, like, Chris Rockin' him, a lot of niggas be looking like, oh, I couldn't do that. What's whatever what Chappelle done doing? But niggas will see niggas who just naturally funny and go up there and do their thing. I get so many niggas that be like, bro, I can do that shit too. And it's like, all right, nigga, you can't do that. <laughs> you think you can. And that's just me being real. And this might be the first time I ever said it. It's like, nigga, you can't do that. It look easy, but nigga, no, you can't do oh, that. Oh, yeah, because the first, the first time people don't laugh. Yeah, man. Yeah, you, you can't lose it and then get mad at nigga, them. You, yeah, you, you no, watch Kevin Durant make a nigga look dumb. You you look at the nigga he going against like, man, this nigga can't hoop. No, that nigga Kevin Durant just that good. Yeah, exactly. You can't do shit with the nigga he just blew by and pulled up on. <laughs> nigga, he'll fuck you up. But Kevin Durant just, nigga, he worked hard enough and he got the gift, so... But yeah, man, I'm just trying to perfect my comedy, dog. So you know where niggas can appreciate it, like, like, like a Chappelle or a Chris Rock or you know any of the greats, nigga. Like I said, Patrice O'Neal, Bill Burr, mm-hmm. like those niggas make comedy look natural. It's like nigga, it just look like something. And you know we do comedy in the D, so niggas niggas think comedy is corny. They think Chris Rock shit is corny because he go up there and be. Huh, 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 yeah. Even though that's not even his fucking cadence no more. But they niggas walk up to me and be like, bro, I ain't even like comedy for real. Like, but I like what you do. And I like that. So niggas, the purists like me, the niggas who like Chris Rock, and the niggas who don't even go to comedy shows who come up to me at the end of the day and be like, bro, I don't even be laughing like that. The drug dealer niggas who be like, bro, ain't no joy in my heart. I don't even be laughing like that. <laughs> I had niggas tell me his man's was like, nah, his man's was like, bro, don't never bring me no shit like this. Ain't again. no joy in my heart. Had me laughing out here in public like this. So it's like, nigga, the purists like me. And it's like, nigga, and the, the niggas who like, bro, I don't even fuck with this shit. Like, my wife made me come to this nigga, but I fuck with you. So I like that. And I just want to put my comedy on that level. I want to sit at that table with all them niggas, Pryor, Drew Carey, uh, 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 George Carlin, and all them niggas, and just sit my shit down, and my body will work right there. And them niggas mm-hmm. be like, yep, he right there with us. That's that's my goal. So you do a lot of, um, you did a couple of um, webisodes, web series. Mm-hmm. You did the one that I was in, the the Walking Dead. Dead wrong. Dead wrong. Then you did another one. You was a, a office worker. Oh yeah, that was a. I did two of them with this one director, videographer in the city, and uh, one was called Jobs, where that was my first time really writing some stuff with him, and it was a lot of Detroit talent in it. We didn't get to do much with it because of resources, and you know, probably niggas just the hustle. On our end, or the end, you know, because that was his project on that end. But Dead Ron was like, nigga, 
You couldn't have told me that wasn't supposed to yeah, work. Who, who wrote, who wrote most of that wrong? I wrote that bitch. Wrote <clears> you that. wrote all of that? Like, bro, it started off on some like comedy shit. Like, we were sitting around talking shit because I just started watching The Walking Dead. And I was like, boom, boom, boom. It started with just an idea. Like, the first episode was literally me just talking to them niggas, like, two niggas live there, woo, woo, woo. And the next thing you know, you know, they run into some. The, the last holes left on earth and then mm-hmm. and then it grew from there and then I literally just start writing the script like boom 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 and just different episodes and different episodes and you know it's one of them things where now I it, it was a lesson learned I won't give niggas so much power over a project or control over a project or trust a nigga with a project that I hold so close cause it was almost like you know this my baby and now this the stepdaddy like alright yeah well hmm huh. I leave, I leave the baby with the stepdaddy and the mama go do whatever and I come back the baby hair fucked up it's like I didn't leave with that shirt where's shoes at he came over with some Jordans on where's Jordans at so and, and by the time I looked at the baby in the, in, the, in the project it was nothing like what I thought it was like I was like I was disappointed with how it turned out even though people still like it's some niggas in Arizona love that bitch that's For random real? but it's like a group of niggas in Arizona yeah, that love that shit. The shit them niggas be hitting me up but it's just nigga the way we shot it the way, the way they shot it edited it Niggas took a lot of shortcuts in it, and I feel like niggas, if niggas would have really took their time with it, that would have, if not blew up, it would have opened up doors for us to do other shit. And I think niggas mm. just kind of bullshit, they bullshitted their way through it. And I'm always going to feel a way about that because it's like, damn, I feel like that would have really connected because it was nothing like that. Yeah. Like, nigga, it was like, it was nothing like that. And it was, it was nothing like that out there. And I'm like, if we'd have put that out the right way, niggas would have received it. Bro, we would have, like, nigga, we'd be talking about something different, but God got a plan for everything, so I don't trip on it. Yeah, make sure y'all go to uh, YouTube and check out uh, Dead Wrong, the series that Josh And wrote, I think uh, Low Key Cuz took that down and put it up somewhere else. I think you can now watch it on uh, Amazon. It's on Amazon now? Yeah, he put it on Amazon. But that's a, that's a power move. I mean, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of just, I don't really talk about it that much no more because it, it kind of pissed me off on the lows. But it's up. It's not on YouTube. It's on Amazon. So if you got Amazon, Amazon just type in Dead Wrong. Dead nigga, wrong. it was just hard because this is what I saw, bro. I never told nobody about this. I saw it getting to the point where nigga, it would be like, it would get to the point where famous niggas would want to come on there and get killed. Like, you look up and we'll meet Snoop and Snoop will get killed. Like, it would just be the shit to be like, all right, bro, we on this. Yeah. I want to be on the next season of Dead Wrong and we get killed. Like, you know, we run into fucking Fat Joe or we run into fucking Camilla Harris and we kill. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That been bro, dope. I had some, <clears throat> like, I saw that, like, growing to be some shit, but it is what it is. And I'm thankful for all the people who loan their talent and their mm-hmm. time to come do it. I wish it could have just turned out a little bit. A, uh, fuck a little bit Way more uh, uh, Way better than it turned out But yeah It's on Amazon If you want to watch it Go ahead I don't think yeah, I'm just, see no cheese from funny. it funny But yeah yeah Just watch it thing, huh? People can And people appreciate What happened People can look at it And appreciate it I just see the glitches in it Like why do you play that song right there what the fuck was that? What happened to this? Place? Yeah, see, I yeah, see you, yeah, you're on the inside. Yeah, you're on, you're on your Denzel yeah. shit. Yeah, you're you on gotta, your Denzel shit. And you got to think about it like this, bro. We not just competing with niggas from the city no more. We compete with a nigga that's in 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 in, in Norway with a camera that's doing shit. We had we had Black Magic. These niggas out here shooting shit with regular ass old cameras. Mm-hmm. That's great stuff. I'm saying like it don't the material like if the material good as long as you shoot it and do what you do people can see the greatness in it so that's my thing like we kind of think because we get the most expensive camera and just shoot something that it's going to be whatever and or it's cool it look, it it's, look in good. Yeah. it's in 4k it's in 4k it's in 4k we comparing it to this and that no nigga when they made buffed up nigga that, was, that went up against everything mm-hmm. like nigga it wasn't just a movie that you would compare to something in the D now nigga buffed up niggas are like nigga some niggas like that better than Friday Yeah, nigga buffed yeah. up got a porno they got a buffed up porno parody. They didn't copy it. <laughs> on God. And the nigga got on some glasses. It ain't really no buffs. He got on some glasses and he just fucking a bitch. And it's called it's called the buff up, buffed up uh, porn parody. It's like, nigga, like you competing with real shit out here now. Hell no. Yeah, shit real. Nigga, it's going to be a motherfucking uh, Chase's Basement p- porn parody down here. Like, they're going to be down here interviewing Pinky and then niggas are going to start fucking. I'm telling you, shit lit now. So, so you, so you, so you, do you plan on writing anymore for like, podcast you, you got something saved you just waiting for the right director the right people or you just sticking with comedy comedy for sure i mean like i'm gonna definitely get out of the you know the, the comedy genre but in reality comedy is my nigga nigga that's my everything like nigga jordan everything opened up for jordan magic and everybody else because that kid was basketball and once basketball opened up that door for them nigga they got endorsements they got in movies they got tequila now they got movie mm. theaters comedy gonna open up everything and i literally 
like I was telling you about waiting and holding on the material. Yeah. Like, nigga, I have like four scripts that I've been developing for like three, four years. And I just kind of get with them every once in a while and, and tink, want to tinker with them and change it. Cause nigga, I'm a different nigga than I was 15 yeah. minutes ago, let alone four years ago. Okay. But they really great ideas. And I was like, man, I'm going to just shoot these bitches. I'm going to keep them. So when I get on and they bring me in the room, cause they always say when you have a meeting, you got to be able to be like, bring not something only to the table. I'm a funny nigga, but I got this. And now I heard of this thing called proof of concept. POC where niggas want to already see you've done it with the little bit of resources that you have. So I got four scripts that nigga, I can legit just shoot shorts. Like I got four movies for sure that I can just shoot shorts and, and a short can be nigga from eight to 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So I can come with four shorts and somebody see them and then nigga, just cause they make them a short don't mean it's dead after that. Like nigga, Napoleon dynamite came from a short. Yeah. That was a short that they shot that was eight minutes long that in, uh, MTV studio songs like when nigga here, we gonna recast what she here, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a little budget, movie, shoot it, huh? bam. So it's like nigga, <clears throat> I'm about to like not, like nigga, I literally came to this conclusion today, dog, while I was at work, bro. I was like, I'm about to just make these shorts. I'm like eight to 10 minute shorts, put them out on some trailer type shit. And then when the buzz get popping up, who knows what independent production come. Nigga Tyler Perry might see him, nigga with the internet, Tyler Perry, my like nigga, come down here to my studio and make all them bitches. Let's make a cult classic. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm on. I'm not wait. I'm not. I'm not leaving nothing else in the holster because I can create more. So why I'm wait? Why I'm sitting on this shit? Because I was about to use the example of inspiration, nigga. It's almost like we all pull from the the we all pull from the pool of inspiration. So nigga, I might dip my cup in there and pull out this great ass idea, but nigga, if I don't hurry up and use it, somebody else. Nigga, this shit gonna evaporate and go right back into that pool. Evaporate. And then another there nigga, and then another nigga school, <clears throat> and then next thing you know, he got the idea. And now I'm like, damn, the nigga, how many times you thought of something or a joke or idea and you see it? Mm -hmm. And be like, damn, he didn't steal it from you. This nigga don't know you. I just took too long to. You just took too long to jump on it. So I refuse. I done seen several ideas let me know that nigga, I got big level. Like, all my shit, my ideas is big level, next level. So it's like, nigga, it's just trying to execute. Mm -hmm. Like, this here, nigga, is execution. You didn't wait on no nigga. You know what I'm saying? You went. And got some fucking green fitted sheets and and fucking uh twist tied them bitches up there, nigga. And now you got a whole studio down in this bitch, nigga. This shit is lit. Whole studio. Don't wait on no nigga, dog. That's nah, the law, bro. Put it out there, bro. You can't. Yeah, sometimes you, yeah, you want it done right. Sometimes you gotta do it yourself. And sometimes motherfuckers ain't gonna pick you. So you gotta do yeah, it. Gotta pick yourself. Fuck these niggas, nigga. They don't fuck with you. Fuck with yourself. And then I bet they come back around. Uh, I don't need nobody now. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm at you, nigga. Shit. <laughs> so you was supposed to uh. He's trying to go to L.A. Because that's yeah. where most of the uh, Laugh Kings is at. Most of them, all of them. You, I'm the oh, only nigga here. Oh, Darius is out there too? Darius been out there for like four or five years. Oh, wow. No, I take that back. Darius been out there for three. Ron been out there probably the longest, of course. So Ron might be going on six or seven. Jeff moved out there a little bit after. Maybe a little bit after Darius. So Darius been out there the second longest, and then Jeff moved out there. So you was about to go leave, what, right before the COVID shit hit? I left y'all. I left um probably like two weeks before it that shit hit real deal. You know what I'm saying? Real deal status because I probably threw like the last big ass like nigga like sweet soul bistro. Mm -hmm. I packed that bitch out for my going away thing. Yeah. Like bro, I'm talking about niggas like the show was supposed to start at eight. Niggas calling me at seven fifteen. Like bro, ain't no more room in here for niggas to be in this bitch. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Damn. Nigga, I got there like nigga the little part. I don't know if that's called the vestibule or what, but it's a it's a hood bar, so it can't be a vestibule. Nigga, the little the little extra part you got before you walk in. Yeah. So I had to squeeze in to get it there, nigga. And me and my little, you know what I'm saying, chick at the time. Squaws in there, got her situated. I'm talking about that bitch was packed, like nigga. And this is when we all thought, nigga, black people couldn't get COVID. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But once Kevin Durant got it, it was over with for everybody once that nigga got it. But niggas was sitting in that bitch, I packed it out. Niggas, niggas, and I want to thank everybody. Like, niggas cash apping me money. Niggas slapping money in my hand. Like, nigga, they sent me out there like, nigga, they, they believe. That's when I really started having more confidence in what it was. Because they always say, I heard a nigga, a nigga said it that night. They was like, nigga, a prophet is never appreciated in his own home. Yeah. They was like, nigga, we ain't never seen this for a nigga that wasn't dead. Like, only time niggas get together like this is when a nigga gone. They're like, nigga, niggas got real love for you. It's something special on you. So, nigga, you couldn't... And I went to L.A. and was just, nigga, slapping hands with the right niggas on fire, going crazy out there. Like, I didn't even see Ron and them. I was working so hard. I didn't even use... Oh, they, for real? I didn't even get a chance to use their plugs. I was living with them niggas. <clears throat> so, Damn. Ron plugged, Jeff plugged, Darius plugged. Three nigga, different niggas plugged in their own way. And they like, nigga, you come out here. You're not coming out here on zero. You coming out here, nigga, on a hundred, and we gonna plug you. I didn't even, like... Ron was like, nigga, I kind of forgot you was here, nigga. Like, that's how... And I was living with this nigga. Like, I was up, washing clothes, working... 
grabbing mics at all these other little spots, shaking hands. I was up and running, but then COVID shut down. I came home. Damn. But I had shows to come back to. Yeah. Like niggas, yeah. niggas was paying me more once I left. I was only gone two weeks. My money had tripled from what I was here. Like nigga, prior to me leaving, niggas like, yeah, I got this little seventy five for you. Next thing I know, niggas like, bro, I got your flight out here. I got a room for you. I was like, nigga, I ain't, I ain't even flew out yet. Like, nigga, I was on the plane. Niggas was booking me back home. Nigga, I came back home. Nigga, I might have had like ten thousand dollars worth of shows. Uh, God, what? What? Oh, what? What? <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, what you say? I went from nigga. Uh, I went. I went from nigga. Uh, before I left, I might make about twelve, fifteen hundred a week. I mean, a month. Nigga, I was coming back to damn near six to ten thousand dollars worth of shows. And of course, when I got back because of COVID, everything was canceled, 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 canceled. But nigga. It just show you niggas was ready to you know I guess you gotta you really gotta what? show niggas what up and dip but what are you for real yeah niggas sent me out there and then niggas was like all right I got your flight back out here bro I'm booking flights back home I'm like yeah I need a room like I had places to stay when I got back but no so nigga, you, I'm out of town now so you 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 getting like you was getting like over three hundred a show niggas was showing love like I guess niggas took me serious like niggas don't take you serious until you not a I was no longer a Detroit nigga to them no more. You, you know what I'm saying? They was like, you not a nigga around here no more. You are, you out here. You out there in this shit now. You you, you, you competing against like nigga Chappelle. Uh, that's what I look like now. I'm not just competing. I'm not competing with nobody but myself. But now I put my material up. Like when I I'm drop not local specials, no more. You did, no, I'm nigga, not my, local. When I drop my special, I'm not giving you a DVD inside of a fucking uh, little plastic slip. No more, nigga. My shit is up against Bill Burr. Niggas gonna be thinking about Corey Holcomb. Like, nigga, Tracy Morgan. Like, nigga, the, the great. So, you gotta approach that material the same way they would. Like, nigga, you not... I, I, I belong to the world, not just the city no more. Exactly. Yeah, I belong to the world, nigga. Like, nigga, I'm a national treasure. Nigga, like, I, I, I belong... I'm an international <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> that nigga said, I'm a national treasure. Like, the, like a statue in Washington, D.C., motherfucker. I'm out, that's me over there. Yeah, that's how we gotta start looking at it. Once you start competing, like, I mean... You you out there competing at that level? So uh, so you just waiting for COVID to move back out there, bro? I don't even know now. Now that I went out there, I ain't even a hundred that I'm gonna just run back out there because, like, I'm looking at this shit you got here, the internet, and with the sh little shit I've been doing, like niggas selling the merch now. Because I told you, I just started realizing I can make money off of what I create now. At first, I used mm -hmm. to just be. Art, 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 art. Now it's like, no, nigga, it ain't really. People don't appreciate his art until it's worth something. So now yeah. I have to sell these things. Like yeah. I have to give people something to fuck with. Now it's like, oh, he got the shirts. Bad, I'm gonna fuck with the shirts. He about to do what? Three specials. Like I'm not gonna get them bitches away. I'm gonna put the clips up on YouTube, and I'm like, hey, come get it off Patreon or come get it here. Like nigga, people don't appreciate something until you. They don't value it until it has something on it. So it's like, nah, nigga, it's time to like take over the internet, nigga, like and dominate this shit, cause. Nigga, they'll come get you. Like, nigga, you here knocking the door. They're like, who is there? Like, nigga, it's Revolt. Come upstairs. So you 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 got to build your brand. Because they really, they really don't. It's like it's like hip-hop. How many streams you got? How many followers you got? It's not it's not the old days where you got a hot single or a look, and then we take you and take you to people, and they develop you. They lazy. <clears throat> what you already got. Yeah. They already want you to be halfway so. Yeah, what's your, uh, how many halfway people, so what's your interactions like? looking like? All right, bet. They want to buy into your audience. Your audience, your demographic is your currency. But they like, want, yeah, we don't want we don't have to try to figure out how yeah, to sell you. Nah, you we you just want to get you to a bigger audience, but you already got to have an audience they that likes you. What's already there? Amplify. And then kind of change it to make you fit something else. But yeah, like that's that's what it is. Like you, I went to L.A. Like nigga, I done met and had talks with niggas where they was like, yeah, you funny. I send niggas my clips. Like niggas like, yeah, you probably the funniest nigga on any show. It don't matter who you on the show with. Celebrity, non celeb, you'll be the funniest nigga there. They like, bro. What do I do with you? Who are you? Like that basically just saying, how can I sell you? And it's like, nigga, yeah. I'm funny. Put me in front of any audience. And they was like, you ain't got no weight though. That's what it was. They was just like, he didn't know what to do with me because he didn't see what to do with me. Because for one, he heard me killing this show to the point where it was like, nigga, you just know when you. I mean, when I, I was getting off. If you see the show, it was just the laughs was just violent, nigga. Mm -hmm. And he like, and this white man heard me talking, but it's like, he like, okay, he probably don't know what I'm saying and what I'm talking about. He can't really relate, but it's like, nigga. I've done this same shit in front of white people, so but he just like I don't know what to do with this, and that's when I realized, nigga, I'm straight. I know what to do with me, and I'ma just that's why I'm, I'm not running to LA because those niggas don't know because it's his job to find me. Yeah, but he gonna look up and a year from now or two years from now, I'm not fucked that a year from now and see me as one of the biggest stars on the planet and be like, somebody gonna be like, and I'ma say that like a nigga at I ain't gonna say or oh, a nigga at uh, Three Arts had the opportunity to sign me. It's not like Kanye had mm -hmm. an opportunity to sign me and he did. 
And when his boss found out, he probably gonna fire that nigga. <laughs> he gonna be like, this nigga, you, you, let me see your email. <clears throat> and he gonna be like, oh, okay, get out of here. Like, I didn't know what to do with him. I didn't know what to do with him. All right, well, nigga, you, you, maybe you will at Aldi's when you out there, nigga. Go get the cards. <laughs> get his cards. You know what I'm saying? And that made me be like, I'm not finna rush back out there. Cause plus they still shut down. But yeah. maybe when they open back up, I'll go out there and do work. But bro, I'm about to put out a bunch of content to the point where nigga, my boy's so stupid that nigga's gonna come looking for me and I can work from where I want to. You know what I'm saying? Cause nigga, I wanted to do comedy way before it was this thing where it was like, oh, to be famous. So it's like, nigga, I ain't in no rush for them niggas. I, mm-hmm. I always just wanted to do this comedy shit. So I'm gonna make it happen on my pace and on my terms and my conditions. Just finding the different avenues yeah. that you can go without somebody telling you, hey, we can teach you how to do this. We can teach you how to you figuring it all out yourself. So whether they come or they don't come, I'll be fine. you still on your own. Look at Corey You're still Hall, on your own vibe. You like nigga, you can build an audience, nigga. You can get an audience, nigga. All you really, in reality, all you need is an audience of five, nigga, of 50,000 people that fuck with what you do and just con- continuously give them content and they'll be like, because, nigga, if you give somebody some content that's precious enough to where they feel like it's just as valuable as the soap they buy every, in the tissue, like, nigga, I have to have Chase's basement. I, okay, he coming where he doing a live one here. And now you got the analytics where you like, oh, they fuck with me in Arlington, Texas. I got a, I got 300 people out there. Bet, I'm going to book a venue. I'm going to sell my mm-hmm. audience to this venue. And the tickets are this much. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have merch. It's like, nigga, okay, if you never get super famous, but if you develop an audience of fucking loyal followers, nigga, that fuck with you, you can live the rest of your life comfortably and nigga be cool with your own little solar system, cuz. So what you uh, what you got next? Besides content, you, you doing another album? Three specials. I'm doing three specials three? this year. Uh, first one I'm gonna record. Videotape or just audio? Video and I'm gonna put audio out. Cause it's, you doing- yeah, I'm a, I mean, cause now that I know that I know how to set it up to get the audio and rip the audio, not just rip the audio from the video, actually get the audio from the audience. That way, my voice and the audio can be leveled out. So no matter how big the laughs is, it's not gonna drown out my, yeah. my you know what I'm saying? It's all coming from different, you know what I'm saying? You dig the sound, you know what I'm saying. But for the layman and the people out there. So you gotta you gonna you gonna pay somebody to do the I'm gonna audio? Pay, Cause now I don't wanna have to I don't want nobody doing shit for me for the love because I can't ask for shit when I want it, how I want it. And you can't t- tell them to change yeah. it. And it's yeah. like even though you my boy, Nate, and if you do sound, I wanna be able to say, Nate, I need this sound like this. Cause I'm mm-hmm. like, damn, you know what I'm saying? And I thought that my sound you start fucking with the wire. And that's why I'm at. So yeah, real talk. I'm about to do three specials. Oh, this on, year. Your mic went out. Oh, the mic went out for real? That one work. I start talking about the industry. These niggas are mad. What the hell happened to your mic? Hold on, let me show. Go ahead. Mic check. We lit. Oh, mic check. There we go. Hold on. Let me see. You still going on, nigga? Sign like this nigga that don't understand. There you go. Let me see. Say something. Man, mic check, one, two, one, two. Sign language. Good guy. Mic check, mic check. We live. There you go. Yeah, you good. All right, yeah. go ahead. But yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, I'm about to uh, record three specials this year. And um, the plan is to put them all out this year because I literally didn't do nothing last year. So it's like, nigga, three specials. I'm going to put a book out. I am going to. Uh, a book? Doing a book. Damn, son. How much living have you done? Uh, this is real specific. But the book is about comedy, or it's a, it's specific. It's about social media and dating. It's gonna be funny though. For real, it's gonna be humorous. So my man Corey Fraser, who got like the studio, com- it's like a comedy book on social media and dating. Yeah, it's like dating in the social media world. So, and the funny thing about the book, I just realized that I'm gonna have a book lend itself to the point where it can be made into a movie. So it's like almost like think like a man. Mm-hmm. So the book and the the movie gonna go hand in hand. So as soon as the book drop, probably for the people who buy the book. I'll probably just give them the movie, like, here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just putting content together, bro. I'm realizing, Damn. like, nigga, I be having these... I be giving niggas ideas how to get that shit popping, and I don't sit around and execute the shit that I know I can make pop myself. So, like I said, three specials, a book. I'm saying this, so now that I'm putting you know, it on yeah, here, you put it on if tape, I don't do it, yeah, I'm a whole-ass yeah, yeah, nigga for you, not doing now it. Now you got to look at yourself and be like, you ain't shit. Exactly. A book, and then, um, like I said, those scripts, I'm going to do those four... Do like four, eight to ten pages at the very least. If they get longer, because I I, I think it's more to add to the, sh- the um the, the short films. Do that, bro. And then from there, nigga, I'm going to just keep putting in shows and doing work. Like you know, like I got the brand, so I want to do some shit to promote more like the brand. I don't know how much long I'm gonna ride the wave on this, but so where can they find the uh, hoodies? They got t-shirts too, or just I'm the working hoodies? on the t-shirts. I think I'm gonna pop that next. You know what I'm saying? So slept on, you know what I'm saying? With the sleeping aisle on this bitch. And um, you can just hit me up. I'm about to put the website together. But right now, nigga, just follow me on Instagram. Um, I do most of that work on there, Instagram and Facebook. So Josh Adams. Josh Adams. With three Zs. Um, that's for the slept on. 
uh, J O S H A D A M S Z Z Z, and then on Facebook, I have So Slept On on there, just a straight up story. So So Slept On with three Z's. But yeah, man, I'm just trying to, like I told you, man, I really pushed the money to the side, Nate, and wasn't thinking about it. But now, it's like, now I got two kids. They you like to eat stuff. nuggets. You said fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> It just turned up because they, because niggas, niggas saw that I was going to the. They was like, "Oh, Josh, big league ready." It, it made it look like all right, because you know, niggas. As long as you sit around here, niggas gonna devalue what you are. But I ain't heard of nobody getting that type of money around here. But I wasn't here no more. Yeah, so you gonna. Was- so nigga, it turned up. Not name one fifteen. It was like six, to, six like six to ten. And it was like this. This what happened, Nate. Like it was a guaranteed this. And then once I was home, niggas was like, "Hey, if you stay, I give you woo wop." I was like, "Well, nigga, you gotta pay for my flight." So I'm including the flights and all the shit and the hotels. So it was like, but it was more money than niggas ever offered me. Like nigga, like doing comedy here on the like at the crib, you had good, you had some good months, some dry months. Like them dry months be scary. Yeah. I remember talking to Larry about it. Like nigga, like you be looking up booked every weekend and you be popping. Then nigga, here comes June and you be like. Shit, nigga, yeah. gotta make arrangements with DTE. They finna cut a nigga off, and but nigga, it was like once I moved, I was like, oh yeah, this is the next level. That's God letting me know that I'm doing the right shit. But it just let me know I can make money doing this, bro. And now so do you? Do you? I'm not playing myself. No do more. you still? Do you still have like money issues, or you just be like, well now, I, I got it. I can make something happen. Or do you just be like, or do you still have times where you be like, I I don't know. It well, might. put like this. I got back, nigga. I took the uh, unemployment money. Shout out to the uh, good people of the government for sending that little money through. <laughs> and I invested it back in myself, and that's what became uh, the shirts. Oh, that's what's uh, up. So I invested a lot of that into the shirts and into myself. And then I, I picked up a job. Like, I, I just had to. You know what I'm saying? It would yeah. just be stupid of me to sit around and think that because it wasn't no comedy, security. nigga. Yeah, a little bit of security. Yeah, it wasn't no money. It like, wasn't no money coming in. So and then on top of that, I picked up a little job. Already had that. Once I picked up a job, I got my back due from the unemployment. So I had that on top. And then, like I said, this became like a third stream of income. I started investing in little shit, like nigga. So I just start seeing little shit coming in. It was like, oh, all right, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and now, nigga, everything I do from the shows into the shirts, nigga, I I'm just putting. I got a business account on the LLC, so nigga, now I'm literally. I've never saved money like that, bro. There you go. You got me one too, <laughs> nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you fuck so, around. so my nigga, you fuck around. so nigga, now they, I'm out here motherfucking, uh, bro. I'm out here, nigga. Say like, I I like watching my money. I put it in there. I ain't touching it. Bye 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 bye. I'm just spending what I make from work, back into my babies or whatever, and everything else is business shit. This, I I got this much from the shirts this week. Boom 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 in the savings comedy show. Boom, right to the comedy show. Boom, 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 boom. So it's like, nigga, I'm stacking. Ain't nothing to really spend no money on if it ain't for like equipment. Mm-hmm. Or, all right, nigga, I need to pay a nigga to do the lighting for my show. I need to pay for the camera. I need to pay for the venue. Everything going back into me. Because, nigga, I ain't, I ain't waiting on the nigga to bring me no money. I'm, I'm going to be my own bag. And then, nigga, when a nigga come to me, he got to come correct. He or she got to come correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, I want to fuck with you. All right, well, this is what I've been putting in me. Nigga, you got to at least put down triple to get in here because I'm bringing the talent and the money. You just bring us money, or you got to bring. You got to really come with the bag. So it's been. You started in 06, 06. 2016, 2014. 14 years, huh? 14, 15 years, nigga. I'm you out here pulling here. down G's, bro. And I was geek, bro. I was geek when nigga like. Just ain't put scared. On. Ain't scared. Ain't nervous about your talent. Confident. I'm getting there though. You know how it is. Got a couple of kids. Two beautiful. Shout out to JoJo and Kennedy. Love problems. Yeah. What's what, hold on? Let me ask. Hold on. Let me, up, hold nigga? on. Hold Shit. on. Before we get end it. it. Hold on. Before we end it. I ain't gonna rush. Get to it. Uh, your comedy album. You. Th- we just say. Uh. Uh. Your comedy album. You th- we just say, uh friend zone. Mm-hmm. How how you six three with dimples and and everybody throwing you in the friend zone? Are you funny as a motherfucker bringing in rats? All right, one. I'm six. What are you What are you doing wrong, Josh? Six, what you not telling us, Josh? Nigga, early on, like I don't get in that friend zone shit now. But that at the time, like that was me coming from a place when girls would just because you can be too funny, and then like nigga, I'm a, I treat women. I treat women right, nigga. Oh, you, you, they, they was looking for you to be the hard dog. Yeah, yeah so like, it's like they they would take like women take that kindness for weakness. They yeah. were like women say they want an aggressive nigga, but in, re, in reality, you want an assertive nigga. So the aggressive nigga gonna beat your ass. 
the certain nigga gonna say, sit your ass down. Yeah. And that's where they get it fucked up at. So I'm just learning to be like, oh, okay, women, like I don't treat women, I don't dog them, but I understand that they need a balance of like, you just not finna do what you want with me just because I care about you. It's yeah, like, exactly. I give a fuck about you, but I'm not finna let you take advantage of the situation because you gonna use that as leverage. The fact mm. that, okay, I can do whatever I want because this nigga really give a fuck about me, he a good nigga. Girl, nah. he let me get away with everything. Nah, bitch, can't let you have that no more. It's like, because I understand what I'm worth. It's like, you know what I mean, bitches want me. So it's like, I'm sitting here playing a role with you and investing in you and fuck with you like that. Yeah, but no, nah, that was back in the day, that friend zone shit. Now, I want too much. Like, bitches can tell I want to fuck off Bill and they like, ain't no friends in that. The only friends I got, nigga, are in, com are in comedy and that's just because they are my fellow employees. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, yeah. uh, uh, Heather J, that's my homegirl. Melody, that's my homegirl. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, uh, ain't no more friends on over here, nigga. If you got a if you got a pussy, it's a good chance I'm trying to get into that. <laughs> you get the hell on yeah, up. Yeah, so like I said, just hilarious. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no friends on over here. You probably the only comedian I run to. Oh, and Jazzy, and Jazzy, you know who you is out of Florida. Yeah, I, I be yes, shooting my uh, shot now for some reason. I be on when, on all these platforms, and it's gonna get to them when a nigga pop. They gonna be like, this nigga Josh was talking crazy down in this nigga basement. He was drinking a Heineken. And he just straight up said, "What up, y'all?" Oh. And you know what that mean. And I ain't trying to be uh, misogynistic or nothing that. I just want to treat you how you're supposed to be treated. Kiss you on the nape of your neck. You know what I'm saying? You ever been just, loved the right way? You ain't. Let me love hilarious. you for a minute. Ah, so you're just hilarious, huh? Yeah. Yeah, she was looking like some. Like, I didn't used to like her like that. You know how a motherfucker grow before your eyes? I like I like the growth. She uh -huh. might be looking at me like, who this dusty ass nigga? I won't be dusty for long. You was dusty at one point. <laughs> but you see the, the potential. I'm looking, looking at in the camera. Eyes. You talking? Because I know she's sitting around. She like, who the fuck is this dusty ass nigga? I'm a dusty nigga. I get it. You got Chanel bags and shit like that. That's cute. Tell her, Josh. The glow up happened. To everybody, just remember that we gonna cross paths. And when no, we do, I you gotta I'm smell leaving. this cologne. You gonna smell the cologne? <laughs> I want you to know that. You know what I'm saying? And we, you might be in my life for a whole lifetime, or maybe just a season. But I guarantee you, you gonna enjoy that season. I'm just telling you what it is, Nate. Want to know that? As, <laughs> as I'm casually drinking on my nigga Kool-Aid cup, I'm confident enough to tell you that. Good dick up under this table. <laughs> this chase is basement. I'm coming back. And it's my cup, nigga, every time. I'm official hey, friend of the show. I'm here. Put your name on it. Purple cup, nigga. Fuck with you. Nate the Chase. Chase's basement podcast. <laughs> Josh Shadows is up in the house. Um, you just heard him. He uh he been making moves for fourteen years and uh shit, the motherfucker just warmed up. He just uh got his feeling, got his vibe about himself. He uh he shit, he hitting the ground running every time his feet touch it. It was a bad season, they and like I said, dog, keep doing what the fuck you doing, cause this shit important. Like I know right now, you know what I, mean? I, I mean, I know you don't understand how important this is, and maybe I hope you do, but if you don't, I'm telling you, shit you doing. And the skills that you got and the talent that you have, nigga, and the drive that you acquired through life, nigga, like you an adult. You know what I'm saying? A grown nigga. Been to the army. You know what I'm saying? You was a Marine or which, which one Marines. was it? A Marine, bro. You took it, you've taken that and applied that to this, bro. And when I'm telling you this shit all look tactical, I'm telling you, bro, keep your foot on these niggas necks. And you know, you ain't never let these niggas get to you because you could have been fucked a lot of niggas up. And I don't want to go into that. Especially all the ones that yeah. was in my DMs. Oh, okay. I thought trying you to do my that. girl. Yeah, I'm not, bro. I'm not gonna bring them up. But. Fuck them niggas. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, keep doing this shit, bro. This shit is gone. I'm single now. You can have her. We love them. Give them back to the streets. <laughs> Go back to the streets, queen. We not tripping on you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who you like. Uh, 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 fucking uh, some more. Look in the camera. Tell some more how you want that pussy. She owe you some pussy. Uh, some more. Uh, please. Here you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll not be assertive like you. I'm old now. Please get that nigga some pussy. I done back soft. Please, Please get my nigga some pussy. You know Please. what I'm saying? Y'all y'all, y'all up there in age now. Y'all don't like to fuck that much no more. One time. I help you with your back taxes. Damn. That nigga trying to get your, back, get your credit right. Back taxes. Here we go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man, I appreciate you having me, bro. Real talk. So Thank tell you. everybody where they can find you at again. You can find me at uh, Instagram. Main vein right there, dog. Uh, Josh Adams with three Z's. J-O-S-H-A-D-A-M-S-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z -Z. No spaces. Um, from there, you can find everything. My link tree on there. And goddamn it, like I said, right now, this is a little bit of merch I got. I ain't going to say a little bit, but I got these hoodies. These bitches hard. They taking over the city. Uh, so slept on. Uh, and I'm working on some new stuff. I got specials on the way, man. Fuck with your mans, dog. It's going to be. I got some shit on the floor for sure. Nathan Chase. Chase's Basement Podcast. Josh Adams up in here.
We are out. This will be up on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. Fuck with him. He's funny as hell. The album, Miseducate, Miseducation of Josh Adams. Miseducation of Josh Adams. Shout out to Lauren Hill. That's my favorite album. It's on uh, My nigga iTunes. Mike Leary just texted me. It's on iTunes. And uh, on top of that, Lauren album, Miseducation, just went diamond. Did it's it? That 10 million. The greatest album today, ever made. Today it went 10 million. We ain't talking million. music or nothing on here. 10 million so. You got to bring me back so we can talk music. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. I love Miseducation of Lauren Hill. That's my most favorite definitely. album. Chase's Basement, Josh Adams, the podcast. We are done. He got a show. I don't know how much money he's getting, but he has a whole bunch of chili fried money. Nathan Chase, Josh Adams, we out of here. See y'all later.